Inna alhamdulillah. Indeed, all praise is due to Allah. My Lord, we praise you, seek your assistance, ask your forgiveness, and repent to you. I praise Allah as He is perfect in every way, and I am grateful to Him. All of His creatures are a testament to His Lordship, and all of His creations establish that only He has the right to be worshipped. All praise is due to Allah, the owner of all favor and generosity who so graciously bestows his abundant blessings upon his creatures. I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone without any partner. This is a word based on which the earth and heavens were created and all of creation was brought into existence. I further bear witness that our Prophet Muhammad is Allah's worshipping servant and messenger. Allah sent him with the final set of laws for mankind and taught them sound conduct by way of his example and teachings. O oh Allah, send salah and salam upon him, upon his valiant family and companions, and upon all who follow their path until the day of recompense. Servants of Allah, continue to observe taqwa of Allah. When someone observes taqwa, Allah pardons that person's sins and grants him an immense reward. Observing taqwa of our Lord brings honor and protection both in this world and the next and it enriches us in both abodes Thus continue to observe taqwa by doing that you will attain all that you aspire for Dear Muslims When we contemplate current events carefully and think about how conditions have changed over the passage of time we become astonished by the state of our world today. Fighting and war can readily be found. Many areas are unstable. Spiritual matters are sidelined and materialism reigns supreme. It is that materialism which demolishes the foundations of religion and each day imposes a strong negative influence upon people's hearts, minds, and ideas. That happens under the guise of using flashy words, which are in fact proclamations of rejecting the truth from Allah. Advocates of materialism also open doors which can lead people to doubt the existence of the one who created the earth and the heavens and to doubt that he is the only one entitled to all worship without any partner. Was it ever conceivable that problems would eventually become so acute that we would hear people in some Muslim nations disavow the belief that only Allah deserves to be worshipped and instead advocate atheism and other beliefs that are at complete odds with Islam? Ours is a time in which many struggles and changes are happening. There are steadily growing waves of people exploiting their religion for various political and sectarian objectives. There are continued attempts seeking to hijack Islam and abduct the minds of its adherents, whether by way of extremism or so-called liberation. Chemical weapons are being used to carry out terrorist attacks against women, children, and other civilians. Zionist occupiers continue acts of aggression at certain sites which are sacred to all Muslims. Various obstacles persistently remain along the path to achieving international peace and safety. And humanitarian crises are on the rise. We may be in an age of information and knowledge such that the rational proofs of Allah's existence have proliferated and can be clearly recognized by people of sharp mind and sound thinking. However, our Muslim Ummah is faced with various sources of pain, division, and loss of focus. These result from matters including the aforementioned. It is precisely at a time like this when there is a need for us to flee to Allah, the most majestic. Allah instructed His Messenger وسلم, to tell the people, you must all flee to Allah. I am a clear warner from Him to all of you. Dear people of Iman, in light of the fact 
that Allah created us in order to worship Him alone, we should ask ourselves, is it possible for us to worship Him without knowing who He is? The obvious answer is that knowing Allah is an absolute necessity in order for us to fulfill the greatest purpose for which He put us in this world. Allah's blessings come to each servant of His continuously. Thus, it is a complete tragedy for any servant of Allah to be ignorant about His Lord and be averse to learning about His Lord as well as His Lord's names and attributes. A person's Iman and certainty increase in proportion to his knowledge about his Lord. The famous scholar Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah commented that knowledge about Allah is a foundation for having knowledge about anything else. Abu Qasim al-Asbahani rahimahullah commented that Muslims should know the names of Allah and their meanings in order for them to revere Allah as He deserves. Make your intention sincerely for Allah alone and follow the path of the Messenger وسلم, that being the path of truth and Iman. Dear Muslims, Allah's majesty is clearly demonstrated by all of the remarkable things He has created. Allah's perfection is proclaimed by the heavens, stars, earth, oceans, mountains, hills, sand, trees, the creatures that inhabit all those places, as well as everything that is moist, dry, living, or inanimate. Allah said, the seven heavens, the earth, and all that they contain proclaim His perfection, and there is not a single thing except that it glorifies and praises Him. However, you do not understand their glorification. Allah is truly always forbearing, most forgiving. Allah is the one who is eternally perfect. None is perfect in every way besides Him. Nothing escapes His knowledge. To Him, everything we conceal is just as plain as what we reveal. He is perfect in every way. Dear people of Iman, contemplate the things Allah has created. They contain innumerable signs which lead us to Him. Consider the sky and its magnificence, the stars and their beauty, the sun and its brilliance, the planets and the awe they inspire, the full moon and the light it shines, outer space and its enormous expanses, the clouds which send water down upon us, the oceans and their waves, and the pure rains which come in succession and also cause rivers to flow. Contemplate the peaks of mountains that rise up so high and remain there throughout the passing of many generations. Our Lord, the Most High, is certainly perfect in every way. Contemplate all of the stars and planets. They follow precise paths and orbits which have been decreed for them. Could there ever be any God other than Allah? Could there ever be any other God along with Allah? None has the right to be worshipped except Him. He is the one who created all things in a remarkable way and gave each one its complete form. His creation is so abundant that it reaches every horizon we can see, both by day and by night, and every part of it allows our minds to be acquainted with our Maker. My dear brothers, all areas of knowledge pale in comparison to knowledge about Allah, the Most Exalted. And this is exactly why He instructed His Prophet وسلم, You must know that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah. Al-Imam Al-Tabari rahimahullah commented that this essentially means, Muhammad, you must realize that there is no deity besides Allah who deserves worship, is fit to be worshipped, or is permissible for you or any other creature to worship. Allah is the one who brought all of creation into existence and has complete ownership and control of all things. Everything besides Him submits to Him as its Lord. None has the right to be worshipped except Him alone. Thus, the greatest thing a person can have knowledge about is the one who is his Lord, Creator, and Maker, as well as his Lord's attributes of complete majesty and perfection. The excellence of any branch of knowledge comes from the excellence of what it studies. This is why knowledge about Allah is unrestrictedly the most excellent branch of knowledge. People did not give Allah His due right. On the day of resurrection, the entire earth will be grasped by His hand and the heavens will be rolled up in His right hand. He is perfect in every way and exalted above all that they associate with Him as partners. Contemplate the lines written throughout creation. 
They are messages which the Most High King has sent to you. If you only contemplated what was written in them, you would find them saying that all deities besides Allah are false. Whether they speak with voices or remain silent, all of them guide us to the attributes of their Lord. Our righteous Salaf spent much time contemplating Allah's signs. They gave those signs due contemplation, and as a result, they attained taqwa, humility, repentance to Allah, which others did not attain. They understood that only Allah deserves worship, none besides Him. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was a very soft-hearted man who wept often. He led the Ummah in having the firmest of sound beliefs. He did not outdo others merely in prayers or fasting, rather his precedence came from something which took root in his heart. In addition, there was Umar ibn al-Khattab al-Farooq radiallahu anhu. He had two dark lines upon his face due to how much he wept. There was also the illustrious Tabi'i Muharib ibn Dithar. When the night came and people had slept, he humbly stood in prayer to his Lord and beseeched him by saying, O oh Allah, I am the little one whom you raised. Thus, you deserve all praise. I am the weak one whom you granted strength. Thus, you deserve all praise. I am the poor one whom you enriched. Thus, you deserve all praise. I am the supplicant whom you answered. Thus, you deserve all praise. I am the petitioner whose request you granted. Thus, our Lord, you deserve continuous and abundant praise. None has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone. My soul was once lost, but my heart later melted by my Lord's guidance. He is the one I love most, and with him I find solace in life. My Lord, you are the one who owns all praise and glory. Thus I ask you for your favor. Any praise I offer you is a mere token of appreciation for the matchless abundance of your blessings. Allah is the one who created all things. Thus. We owe it to Him to sincerely devote all of our worship to none besides Him. Servants of Allah, flee to Allah. When you do so, you will attain true happiness and success in this world and the hereafter. Allah instructed His Messenger وسلم, Say, I sincerely devote my prayers, my right to sacrifice, my life and my death all to Allah alone, the Lord of all creation. He has no partner. That is the command I have been given. And I am the first to submit to him in Islam. May Allah bless us all by the Quran and Sunnah, and may He allow us to glean benefit from the ayah and wisdom they contain. I say this much and I ask Allah to forgive me and all of you. Thus, seek His forgiveness and repent to Him. My Lord is indeed most loving and bestower of mercy. All praise is due to Allah. His attributes are always perfect. His servants can always recognize Him by His blessings and all the evidences of His Lordship. O oh Allah, send abundant salah and salam upon our Prophet Muhammad as well as upon his family, companions, and all who consistently follow their path. Servants of Allah, Continue to observe taqwa of your Lord and be grateful for his innumerable blessings. The best speech is the book of Allah and the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa The worst of matters are those which are invented and then ascribed to the religion. Always adhere to the body of Muslims who does what is correct. My dear brothers who have sound beliefs, among the clearest and most indisputable of facts is that the greatest individual to worship Allah was the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Messenger's life was the purest and most exemplary. It was replete with sincerity, nobility, dignity, strength of soul, and foundations of virtue. He reached completion in stature, conduct, and all qualities. Thus, his virtues are too many to enumerate. We swear by Allah that no one else like our messenger ever walked upon the earth and there will not be anyone like him again all the way until the day of resurrection. Throughout the long annals of history, no person had his foes, even before his friends, attest to his integrity and nobility as did our beloved Prophet and Roma Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The hearts of those 
around him, memorized the details of his character even before written records preserved them for us. He was the messenger whom Allah guided and named. It is necessary for us to emulate our Prophet's guidance, make it the course we follow, use it to treat our illnesses, and seek light from its brilliance so as to light our path. It is especially imperative to do those things now at a time in which Islam has become something strange, turmoil is rampant, people advocate many ideologies and misguided inclinations, and various ideas and practices have been invented and then falsely ascribed to the religion. Allah instructed His Messenger وسلم, say to the people, if you truly love Allah, follow me. If you do so, Allah will love you and forgive your sins. And Allah is the most forgiving, the bestower of mercy. Say, obey Allah and, and the Messenger. Say, obey Allah and the Messenger. However, if they refuse, Allah does not love those who reject. In addition, the Messenger وسلم, said, anyone who performs a deed that does not conform to our command shall have it rejected. Thus, it is crucial to emulate his guidance and also strive to not stray from it or change it. I say to anyone who desires salvation, listen to these words from someone who seeks to help you and wants what is best for you. In all matters, ensure that you adhere to revelation, not the attractive words which others may utter. Comply with the book of Allah and with the sunnah of the individual who brought us the Qur'an. May Allah grant all of you his protection. Bear in mind, that one of the clearest and most consistent forms of following our beloved messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam is to invoke salah and salam upon him thus you must do so in compliance with the command of your lord the most exalted who said indeed allah and his angels send salah upon the prophet people of iman invoke salah upon him and invoke salam upon him as well Invoking salah upon the best of mankind is a means to success in this world and the hereafter. When you do that often, you would be admitted to Jannah, which contains lush and beautiful gardens. O oh Allah, send salah upon Muhammad and upon the family of Muhammad, just as you sent salah upon Ibrahim and upon the family of Ibrahim. Indeed, you are most praiseworthy, most glorious. O oh Allah, bless Muhammad and the family of Muhammad, just as you blessed Ibrahim and the family of Ibrahim. Indeed, you are most praiseworthy, most glorious. O oh Allah, be pleased with our Prophet's four rightly guided successors, Abu Bakr, Omar, Uthman, and Ali, as well as all the rest of the companions and those who follow their path until the day of recompense. O oh Allah, most merciful of all, be pleased with us along with them. O oh Allah, grant strength to Islam and Muslims. O oh Allah, grant strength to Islam and Muslims. Weaken those who are enemies to their religion. O oh Allah, we ask you to grant us safety in our lands. Bless our lands with stability and rectify our leaders and authorities. O oh Allah, support our leader, the custodian of the two holy mosques, with the truth. O oh Allah, support our leader with the truth and guide him to do all that you love and are pleased with. O oh Allah, direct him, his deputy, their aides, and all of their brothers to do what would be best for your servants and their lands. O oh Allah, guide all leaders of Muslims to comply with your book and the sunnah of your Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. O oh Allah, you are the best in whom we can place our trust and you are the best who can take care of us. O oh Allah, we beseech you to protect us from all harm. Indeed, matters have become very difficult for our brothers in Palestine, Burma, Sham, Ghuta, and other places. O oh Allah, we call upon you alone to grant them victory over those who are subjugating and oppressing them. O oh Allah, we beg you to save our brothers who are downtrodden in Ghuta and Duma. O oh Allah, we call upon you to grant them your assistance and grant them victory over those 
who are showing such hostility to them. O oh Allah, we call upon you to exact retribution from the tyrannical who are oppressing and subjugating our brothers. O oh Allah, we call upon you to exact retribution from them and to inflict your punishment upon them. Indeed, you are the Almighty, the owner of all power. O oh Allah, we call upon you to take care of our brothers in light of their weakness and dire circumstances. O oh Allah, we call upon you, the owner of all favor. O oh Allah, we ask you to forgive the people of Islam and Iman, men and women alike. O oh Allah, we ask you to guide them all to the paths which would lead them to guidance and your protection. O oh Allah, we call upon you to protect our brothers in Libya, Yemen, and all other places. O oh Allah, we call upon you to assist our brothers in Burma and all other places. O oh Allah, we ask you to grant them victory over those who are enemies to you and enemies to them. O oh Allah, we call upon you to avert the plots and schemes which are being directed against the lands of Muslims. O oh Allah, we seek your protection and defense against all harm. O oh Allah, support our security forces. O oh Allah, we ask you to guide their plans and direct their aim. O oh Allah, cure their ill, heal their injured, and accept their martyrs. O oh Allah, make their hearts steadfast and allow them to be victorious over those who are enemies to you and enemies to them. Our Lord grant us good in this world, good in the hereafter, and save us from the torment of the hellfire. O oh Allah, forgive us, our parents, and all Muslims, whether alive or deceased. O oh Allah, bless us in this month of Rajab, as well as Shaban ahead of us. O oh Allah, we beseech you to allow us to reach Ramadan, and we ask you to accept our acts of worship. Our Lord is perfect in every way. He grants protection to all of his messengers, and all praises due to Allah, the Lord of all creation.